I'd like to show you a web application that shows Google Maps around schools using the Flask framework for the web application and the Google Maps API to draw the map. Here's the web app. We'll choose a school and here's a map around the school. We'll go back, choose the other school, here's a map around this school. Why don't we add a third school? Let's find another school. Walnut Creek Intermediate School. Notice these latitude and longitude values here. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to make a new element in this tuple of schools here. And I'm going to make up a, a key, which is just a way to uh, find the school. And I'm going to call this WCI, because that's what the kids call it. And here are the coordinates. I like things to line up, so I'm going to change these above here. Okay, back to here. I'm going to go back, reload, and now we have Walnut Creek Intermediate. And there it is. Good. Why don't we see how the program works? First, I'll say that the styling here in the web page is done through Twitter Bootstrap. And if you haven't heard of that, that takes a lot of the hard work out of making buttons and having fonts that look nice together and displays that are responsive. In other words, look nice on a small screen and a large screen. Let's take a look at the code. Here is the Python module. It's called GMAP. And you see we import some things from Flask and we create a Flask application. And we have a class here for the information that we store for each school. The key, which I said is just an identifier for it. And then the name, the latitude and the longitude. And then here we define three schools. And here, so that we can look them up by the key, we create a dictionary using a dictionary comprehension, this. For every school in this tuple of schools, we create a key value pair where the key is this key, one of these, and the value is the school object. Just to take a look here, you see when I choose one of these, this is the key. It's used here to present the right map. Here is the function that produces the main page, the index.html. That's the page that you get if you don't ask for anything after the slash. In other words, this page. And you should see a title and then uh, one button for each school that's defined in that tuple. And this function, index, is mapped to uh, nothing, essentially. If there's a slash there or, or no slash even, it will produce a page from this template file, index.html, which we'll look at. And it will also pass in to some Flask logic this school's tuple so that it has access to everything in there and can produce the buttons. Let's look at the index.html now. Here it is. You should recognize this as an HTML page. Um, there's some stuff at the top here for working on a variety of devices, including mobile devices. And this link here loads Twitter Bootstrap from another site. Um, Twitter Bootstrap uses divs with a class of container for the outermost container. And here's the H1 for choose a school. And then this is part of the templating language. You see the special symbols here. And the way you read this is for every school in the school's tuple, produce 
one of these paragraphs, and the paragraph has an anchor tag inside with these Twitter bootstrap classes that make the button. And the href is the school.key. Remember here in the class, school, each school has a key like this. Um, so this produces the href. And the school name here appears as the body of the anchor tag. And this ends the loop. Back to the program. That's the end of this part. Now let's look at this part, which is the second page that runs with the school code chosen. The uh, Flask allows us to say that anything that, is, that follows the slash is to be passed into this function in this parameter here, school code. And we'll use school code to look up in this schools by key. Remember, this is a dictionary mapping from the key to the school object for each of the three schools that we have here. And if we find the school in the dictionary, then we render from a template called map.html. And um, similar to what we did before, we pass in the single school that we want. We don't pass in the whole tuple of schools, just the one that was identified by the key. And if we don't find the key, then we produce a 404 error, which means page not found. And this line here runs the Flask application. Uh, the last thing to look at is this map.html that produces the second page. And here it is. And a lot of the beginning parts of it are the same as before. Um, here, this code here has to do with producing the Google Map. And this loads the Maps API from Google. And then this identifies one of our functions below that we call init map. And this creates the Google Map. And the latitude and longitude come from the particular school that was selected and passed into this template. Here in the body element, we have an onload attribute with the value of init map, and that causes the init map function to be called when the page loads. And then here, another container div, we have the h1 with the school name and the word school, and then we have a div with an ID of map that's 100% wide, 900 pixels high, and it's empty, but the Google Maps API will fill it in because here's the ID of map, and here we've specified the ID of map. Okay, so that's a look at a Flask web application that uses the Google Maps API to show schools. And you can find the source code for this on GitHub. DC Brichetti, go to Python Lessons, and Web, and Flask, and then you'll find GMAP.